Hello, BCIT. So I'm here with one of our mentors, Jordan Rogers, who's the founder of Lloyd James Plant-Based Sales and Marketing. And Jordan's been mentoring with our BCITSA Entrepreneurship Mentorship Program for the last few years. Uh, and I've got Jordan on the line to ask a couple of questions about marketing and how it is being a, the founder of a business these days. So thanks for being here, Jordan. My pleasure. Um, and just to start things off, I'm wondering what has COVID done to Lloyd James marketing lately? Um, what is going on with the business and what have you done to adapt since this pandemic hit? Sure. So we've had to learn how to adapt to new norms, uh, mainly losing the personal communication because we're a heavy sales and marketing agency. So that relies on um, you know, group group meetings with our team and also getting in front of our clients. Um, so we've had to tear up those plans for new business yeah. development, which involve personal contact and, and pivot. Um, we really focused on um, caring heavily for the business that we do currently have because mm -hmm. business development certainly has been a challenge. So we've right. gone in and focused on the clients and business that we do have and um, really um, put on those gloves and started caring for them a little bit harder. Um, I think, like I said, you know, new business development uh, can be a challenge if yeah. customers don't know what's on the horizon. No one knows what's going to happen six to to a year from now. Yeah. Uh, so certainly we've adapted by becoming better communicators, um, and that involves being vulnerable, um, really, and, and sharing how we're feeling and, and asking mm -hmm pertinent questions of um, prospects and existing customers and we're finding that we're having some some great communications um, internally I guess the opportunity for us has um, really been that we've been able to dig deep also in our business and we're mm -hmm. uh, going through a rebrand so we're oh, moving okay. away from Lloyd James plant-based sales and marketing towards Lloyd James group and focusing on our three core uh, pillars of our business um, nice. and, and that'll really allow us to uh, change course and, and come out of this strong but I think um, for any businesses that are kind of stuck in that rut it's a great time again care for existing customers harder um, and also dig deeper into your business and um, figure out what you can do to plan out. Nice so taking some time to think about that strategy more some of yeah. that internal work that's sure. definitely a good piece of advice. Um, Oh, just to uh, continue what you said about taking care of your existing customers more, um, how are you staying connected to your customers uh, now that the communication channels might be different? You don't have the opportunity for in-person. Um, can you share any strategies with BCIT entrepreneurs for staying connected with potential customers? Sure. Like everybody's doing Zoom right now and certainly, uh, you know, um, whether you're a first time Zoomer or a pro, we're all kind of going through this together, which is uh, interesting and mm -hmm. fun. Um, one tactic we've done when COVID first hit is um, I thought to myself, you know, how do we want to be remembered coming out of this? And I think the answer for us is that we want to be remembered as a caring organization. So one thing that we did, which students or business owners can do, um, is we just sent a, an email to all our stakeholders and yeah. the, the subject line was thinking of you. And below uh, it would be, you know, hey Joe, hey Susan, whatever. Just wanted to let you know I'm thinking of you, period. And then share a little story and just sign off. And uh, we just sent those out to all our stakeholders, you know, not trying to sell them anything, mm -hmm. um, but just, you know, connecting with them um, uh, on a one-on-one -on -one basis and, and sharing that memory. Um, mm -hmm. For me, I would always kind of use some self-depreciating humor in that a little story talking about my persistence. Mm -hmm. um, and the response was phenomenal. People really want to be thought of. So by sending that simple email, just thinking of you, sharing a little story, um, and hitting the send button. Um, that's been a really cool thing where we've gotten some great response back. Nice. I like how you connected that to the story, sharing story, and also uh, noting that not all the communications have to be about sales, right? Just trying to uh, build connections and not always trying to sell. That can come down the line, but 
Yeah, overall, and not even really addressing, you know, COVID, just saying, hey, I'm thinking about yeah. you, and here's a funny story, put a smile on someone's face, you know, people ultimately remember how you made them feel, not necessarily what you said, and I think it's a great tactic, you know, a meaningful, um, genuine tactic to, to send that email off. Nice, I like that idea. Um, and then... I wanted to ask a question about products since I know you have so much experience with uh, working with companies who are bringing new products to market. Um, are there any uh, strategies um, or marketing considerations that founders can uh, keep in mind when they're launching a new product? I think the way that uh, brands are, are interacting with their target consumers have changed. So if you look mm -hmm. at what's changed, the ability to do an in-store demo in our case. So that's setting up at a Whole Foods or a Choices and getting behind a table and giving people samples. That's changed and maybe right. gone. Um, yeah. You know, there's less in-store advertisements. There's less big displays because now the consumer is forced to kind of shuffle through a store in a, in a um, regulated line. Right. So, you know, the, the tactics that we've used to um, make our products stand out in store have changed. Right. So I think there's three important things now um, that uh, food brands or consumer packaged goods brands um, can do to stand out on the shelf. One is really um, dialing in and looking at your packaging. It has to be clear, simple, really pop on the shelf because Consumers previously to COVID had about three seconds to make a purchase decision. Now there's no more browsing. And, and yeah. uh, if your product blends in your toast, um, two, I think it needs to be priced right. So looking at the competition and figuring mm -hmm. out where it should be priced. Um, and then three, we're in a great position now too. If your product's Canadian, um, mm -hmm. I think we're having some deglobalization, as they call it, and consumers looking for more Canadian brands. So those three things I think are, are important call outs and considerations. Awesome. Yeah, it makes sense with uh, how much things have changed and how different the shopping experience is now. Yeah. And, and I mean, um, I can also share from my BCIT days, we had yeah. a great instructor, Rick Kretsch in entrepreneurship, yeah. and he taught us a lot of business um, acronyms. One of them he said was mom. Uh, okay. Mom stands for money opportunity moment. So if, you know, uh, students are looking to, to, to launch a new consumer packaged goods product, they have to think money. Do they have the money to support it? The good news is there's tons of government grants um, out there right now. Opportunity, it's a little bit tough to launch a new product in COVID time because buyers aren't necessarily looking for new items. Um, and then, um, you know, moment is is now really the time and it is the opportunity uh, there. So those are some things to, to think about. Thanks for bringing it back to your BCIT days. Of course. Awesome. Well, that's a great place to end it. Thanks so much, Jordan. Yeah, my pleasure.